The first one is clay. Obviously, we want to start with that one because we're going to be working with clay all semester. And you know already you have clay. I've given you clay to work with. Okay, basically clay is uh, just like an earthly substance. Okay, and it's various materials and minerals that can be found all over the world and mixed in the proper amounts with moisture um, can make uh, a type of clay that you can create uh, pottery with or sculptures with. Pottery. Pottery is pretty much just a functional container made of clay. Now as I go through these you'll notice some of these are quite long. Don't, don't think that you have to write down exactly what I have. If you can paraphrase it so that you understand what it is, don't worry about that. You see pottery is quite small, functional container made of clay, but some of them are a little bit longer so don't feel like you have to write down every word. If you understand it, that's fine. So if it's not a container, then it technically is not a pot. So what would be an example of that is a sculpture. So a sculpture can be made of clay. You see there's three different examples right here. One made, actually two probably made of wood. And then that third could be made of stone. But it could be made of clay. But uh, sculpture is just three-dimensional art. Now this is an important one here, slip, because we deal with slip all the time. Um, but basically, slip is just liquid clay. You take clay and you add water to it and you water it down and make it liquidy. And that's what slip is. Now, we use it for a couple different things. Mainly, we use it for joining clay. But you could use it for decoration or slip casting. We've done that before where we had molds and we've uh, casted um, some objects using a slip. When we talk about plastic, we're really talking about plasticity when clay is able to bend without breaking, okay? So basically when we talk about plastic clay, we're saying it's soft, workable clay. But sometimes I'll, you'll hear me say plasticity. That means how easy it is to bend without breaking or cracking. And that's really important. This is a really important term, and when you start working with clay, you're going to see it's very important when you're working with clay. When clay dries out some, it it loses some moisture by taking it out of your plastic bag and it gets a little bit dry it becomes what we call leather hard and there's various leather hards there's a little bit leather hard and there's kind of a lot leather hard or some, some places in between but this is a good time if you need to shape your clay or you need to carve into it um, because it'll hold its shape a little bit better and when you're carving you don't have all that clay just like sticking to your project. You can carve it away and it'll fall away. It really works out pretty well. Okay, next is bone dry. And this is very dry, brittle, chalky clay. Now, the bone dry means, just like it sounds, all the moisture is gone. So we let it sit out, we let it dry out. In some cases, we'll let it dry out a couple weeks, depending on how thick it is. If it's really thin, we might be able to let it dry out a few days. And if it's really thick, we want to let it dry out for a long time because you know what happens. If we put it in the kill and it's not dry, the moisture in it expands and blows apart your clay. So it's got to be very dry to go in the kill. Okay, it's got to be bone dry. So how can you tell it's bone dry? And a lot of kids have, have a hard time telling when it's bone dry. Um, if it's really chalky, if you kind of wipe your hand on it and you got chalk residue on your hand, it's probably bone dry. Okay, and it's very brittle at this point, so you got to be very careful. I would never tell someone to pick up a clay pot by its handle or by, you know, the lip of it, the very small lip of it. I mean, I would be very careful with clay in this stage. Bisque, when we talk about bisque, bisque pots or bisking, it means to fire it. Or if you see bisque wear, that means it's been fired. It's been fired one time. Um, to fire means to heat the clay to a high temperature to harden it. Now in class here we heat ours to about 17-1800 degrees. It's pretty hot. It's red hot just like these pictures here. And in our kill you can actually, there are little peepholes, you can look in there. But I tell students don't do that. Don't get your eye closed to that hole. That heat will come out and get you and it will not be good. So we, we stay away from that. But um, to fire or to bisque means to heat it and that will harden it. Okay, reclaim. Uh, 
This is the old way of reclaiming these pictures here. And let me explain what it is. Reclaiming means that we take old clay that's not been fired, even if it's really dry, we break it up, we put water, we put it in water and let it dissolve, we mix it with our hands, and then we pull it out to let it dry. And you'll see here, we have it pulled out on a plastic, on a plaster slab to dry out. Once it dries some, we wedge it up with our hands, we knead it, you know, and mix it up with our hands, we cut it open, make sure there's no air bubbles, and we use it again. So if you get dry clay, um, you can go ahead and reuse it. You just have to get it wet, soften it up, and uh, wedge it up, and you'd be you'll be fine. Okay, when we talk about soluble in clay, we're talking about being the clay being capable of being dissolved in water. It's soluble. It's water soluble, meaning that if I took a piece of clay that was bone dry, that was hard with no moisture in, in it, and I threw it in a, a bucket of water, I come back the next day, it's all going to be like uh, goo. I mean, it's going to be all dissolved in there. It's going to be kind of like slip, maybe, kind of like a whole bunch of goo in the bottom. It, it, the clay is soluble until it's fired, meaning that we can reclaim it and reuse it and add water to it. But once it's fired, it's not soluble anymore. Shards. Shards are broken pieces of pottery. For example, if for some tragedy you put your stuff in the kill and we fire it and it blows up, and we got these pieces of pottery. These are called shards. Now, can we do anything with these shards? No, we can't do anything with this. This all gets thrown away. So what I do is I scoop it out of the kill and I put it in the trash. Okay, we can't be reused. Now remember that broken pieces of bone dry clay can still be reclaimed. But if it's been fired, we cannot use it. Greenware is bone dry clay projects that are waiting for the kill. They have not been fired. Okay, so what we'll do is when we get done with the project, we will take it out of our bag and we'll let it dry out, and that's called greenware. It's in the bone dry stage, waiting to go in the kill. Now we have to remember that it is very brittle, easy to break, very easy to break. So we're going to be super careful with this, and we put it up on the shelf. Sometimes we put it right in the kill, let it dry in the kill, and then when the, it's all dry, then I will fire it. Stoneware is a type of clay. It has what's called grog in it. And we're going to talk about grog a little bit later. But grog is pretty much clay that's been fired, ground up, and put back into the, the uh, plastic clay. And that strengthens it, but also makes it kind of rough. Now, sometimes when kids are working with clay, they like to smooth it out, and they take some water and they try to smooth it. And then they notice they've got little flecks of looks like sand in their clay. They're like, Mr. M, look at this. This is, you know, I just put some water on here. I was trying to smooth it. I'm like, okay, what you did was you took really the clay off of the top, and you're exposing all the grog. Okay? Sometimes they call that the cream is the, the top, the smooth stuff. You're taking all the cream off and you're seeing the grog. Just like in concrete. If you ever seen concrete, they have rocks in concrete. But when they smooth it out, it's all smooth. This, it's the same way for clay. The grog is kind of like those rocks. Earthenware is another type of clay. This is the clay we use. It's considered a low firing clay. And we fire it to about 17 or 1800 degrees. Um, there's different types of earthenware, um, and we get different types of clay in here, and it has different colors, and it, some of it has a little bit more grog, some has a little less grog, but it's basically kind of, it's not stoneware, but it's not porcelain. I'll explain porcelain in a minute. Um, but it's a very uh, basic kind of clay, and you can see in this example here, the pot that's there uses something called terracotta or red clay but we'll go over that a little bit later. Porcelain is another type of clay, and it's a very fine clay, meaning that I don't think there's any grog in porcelain. When I've worked with porcelain, it just, it really, it's easy to work with it. You know, it's not rough, it's so smooth, it's like silky smooth. And you can see with porcelain, they make very, very fine china, very thin, okay? And it's very white, but you know, there are other things made of porcelain. Oops, Siri's asking me about waving. Um, but, um, like, um, toilets are made of porcelain. Sinks are made of porcelain. 
Um, so other things are made. Sometimes light fixtures are made of porcelain also. So other things can be made of porcelain, but china is also made of porcelain. Okay, terracotta. Terracotta is um, another type of uh, earthenware clay. Uh, it is red. And you notice that if you've ever seen like the red flower pots, that's terracotta. Uh, you may have heard about these terracotta warriors in China. They dug these up. And uh, you can see the example on the screen. They made that all of clay, which is a massive, massive undertaking. I don't know how they did all that, but uh, they did. So it's kind of a red type of clay. And we've used this in the past. I don't know that we have any now, but uh, I really like the terracotta clay that we usually get. It, it just uh, shapes really well. It kind of gets you dirty, though. There's no doubt about that. Okay, I talked about grog before, and I said it was like hard fire clay that is ground up and then put back into plastic clay to make it stronger. And it looks like sand. And you can see there's different types of grog in this example. Some more coarse, um, some more fine, and some little bits of different color, but it's all, all grog. And that's just inside the clay. And you'll notice it if you try to smooth your clay with water. You never smooth your clay with water. Only way you want to put water on your clay is if it's getting too dry and you need to rehydrate it, that's when you put water on it. You don't use it for smoothing. Um, hand building. We do hand building in class. That's what we do and that's what you're going to be doing. Um, and it's basically making pottery with only your hands or simple tools. Okay, No um, machines or wheels. No um, plaster molds, okay? Um, so here's some examples of hand building here. In these cases, it looks like they're using the slab technique, and we're going to show you that in a second. Okay, these are some of our building techniques, and one of our first projects will be the pinch technique. And it's a very simple idea, but to do it can be very difficult to do. Um, so generally in like grade school, you learn how to make a pinch pot, um, but to make a really good one, it's hard. And I will show you that later when we start working on pinch pots. But basically what you do is you take a ball of clay, a small ball of clay, you put your thumb in it and you pinch it, spin it, and pinch it until you form a clay pot. Okay. Uh, again, it's a very simple but a very hard technique. I can't explain it. You'll understand when you start doing it. You'll understand how it can be very difficult. Coil is a rope of clay. Okay, We take ropes of clay, we roll them out like snakes, and then we coil them up to form a pot. And we use, sometimes we do it like a, a freestanding coil pot. Sometimes we'll use a form like a bowl and we'll put our uh, coils in a bowl. And we're going to do that in class this year. So you will get a chance to do that. A slab is a flattened out piece of clay. You see right here in the example, they have a rolling pin and two little sticks. You see the sticks over to the side? They look like dowel rods. They may be dowel rods in this example. But a lot of times I will use like a ruler, a couple rulers. And what you do is you put your clay down on a piece of canvas or something that will release it never on the table because it will stick and it's hard to get it off. Okay, You put it, a piece of paper or canvas under it and two sticks or rulers or something on the side to keep it the same thickness and you roll it out and that's a slab and you see the example of this pot made with uh, the slab technique now throwing is making a um a pot on the throw on the potter's wheel okay and they call that throwing a pot and we will not do that in 3d1 um, some people may get a chance to do it in 3D2 if they take that class. It is very difficult to do. And I know you see it on TV and it looks like people are just whipping these pieces of pottery up, but it takes a very long time to learn how to do it and do it well. Um, but you may get a chance to try it if you want to. We'll have to see how it goes. Okay, now we're going to stop here because I'm going to have you complete an assignment. I don't think it's 3A, but... Um, I will let you know in Google Classroom what assignment it is, and you're going to complete the assignment, and we are going to continue our vocabulary later. Okay, that's it for now. I will see you soon.